introduce Father, Father Tony, our friend from Rome, um, who is going to be leading the rosary. And after the rosary, we will begin our pilgrimage to Assisi. Father Tony. Well, good afternoon, Deb. Uh, I'm here in London, a very warm day. Today, the church celebrates the feast day of Our Lady of Pompeii, who through Blessed Bartolo Longo and the famous icon enshrined in the sanctuary there is so linked to the rosary. Today, we also remember Our Lady of Lujan, who is the patroness of Argentina. So we pray especially for Pope Francis in this rosary and our Pope Emeritus Benedict. Archbishop Sorrentino, who we hope will join us from Assisi for this special pilgrimage, was appointed prelate of Pompeii by St. John Paul II in 2001. And Archbishop Sorrentino comes from a small town near Pompeii called Bosco Reale. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Amen. Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today we contemplate the sorrowful mysteries. We focus on the theme of vocation, our calling, as St. Francis of Assisi was called to holiness. The first sorrowful mystery is the agony of Jesus in the garden. Jesus took his closest friends, Peter, whom he was to give charge of the church, James and John. John was the one who was going to take care of priests after Jesus had risen from the dead. Jesus said to them, my heart is sorrowful to the point of death. Stay here and pray and keep watch while I go and pray by myself. Let us offer this mystery for those who are in doubt about their calling in life. We pray that as the Father sent an angel to reassure Jesus of God's will, the Lord will reassure us and enlighten anyone who doubts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, my Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Forgive us our sins. Save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. The second sorrowful mystery, the scourging at the pillar. Pontius Pilate said to placate the cloud, I find no fault in this man worthy of death, so I will have him scourged, then I will set him free. Let us pray to the Father that he will heal the wounds of those who find themselves in any kind of oppression or bondage in their vocation. We pray through Mary that they will be liberated and healed by the stripes of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Glory, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The third sorrowful mystery, we contemplate Jesus, crowned with thorns. After the scourging, Jesus was led to the praetorium. Placing the crown of thorns on his head, the soldiers mocked him. All hail, King of the Jews. Let us pray with Saint Francis of Assisi and Saint Clair to follow Jesus by leaving all sin behind by loving God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Day. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Aunt Mary, full of grace, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, and save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. The fourth sorrowful mystery, we contemplate Jesus who carries his cross. The people who cried Hosanna now cried, crucified him. Out of obedience to his father, Jesus continued the journey until he reached Calvary. To the women who were weeping, he said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but for yourselves and your offspring. Let us pray for the gift of obedience, that each one of us will be obedient to the call that God has given us. We pray to be true disciples of Jesus, to always say yes to Jesus, like Mary, even though it may mean suffering and sorrow. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fifth sorrowful mystery, we contemplate the crucifixion of our Lord. Jesus says to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And to John, behold your mother. Jesus gives to John, the first priest, and to every disciple, his mother. Mary is a mother who bears, nurtures, and intercedes for us before her son. Let us pray that we will always have recourse to the Blessed Mother, who remained at the foot of the cross as Jesus suffered death. Let us pray that we will have recourse to her in the trials and temptations of our calling in life. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. 
As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls into heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. As we approach midday now in the East Coast and 6 p.m. in Rome, we pray together the, the Hail Holy Queen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor, banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. We now pray the prayer of Pope Francis. Our Holy Father has asked us to pray this special prayer. So we are united with him in spiritual communion and the entire church. If Archbishop Sorrentino has that prayer. Father, I don't, I don't, I'll have to check with Christopher. I don't think that he's oh, okay. on right now. Oh, there he is. Your ex can, can, can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can hear you fine. Okay, okay. Omero, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust our service to you, health of the sick, who at the foot of the cross were united with Jesus suffering and persevered in your faith. Protectress of the Roman people, you know our needs and we know that you will provide so that as it can in Galilee, joy and celebration may return after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to confirm our service to the will of the Father and to do what Jesus tells us. For he took upon himself our suffering and burdened himself with our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us always from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Will you give us your blessing, Archbishop, on this feast yes. of our Lady? Yes. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Thank Your you. Excellency. Thank you, Father Tony. And to Chris Deirdreff in Florida, who led two of the Mysteries of the Rosary. Uh, she's down there with her family. Chris is Bob's right-hand person on the magazine. Um, she's just been wonderful. To, she's been with us now for five years, part of the Inside the Vatican family. And Rick and Molly Jesse, thank you so much. They've traveled with us many times. They are in the New England part in Vermont. Um, of the United States. Um, and Marion Mohol was supposed to lead a decade, but I think some technical difficulties. Uh, Marion Mohol is a friend of ours in Ireland, and Marion started worldpriest.com, the rosary relay that's been going on for over a decade now. And so we thank each of you. We have people from around the Universal Church on this pilgrimage, and we are so excited to bring the CC to you. And we are so honored to have the Bishop of Assisi with us, our friend, Archbishop Domenico Sorrentino. We are honored 
um, to call you friend. And we are honored Thank that you. you are joining us here in uh, taking everyone to your city and the city that we love, the city of Francis. And, You're welcome. You're and welcome. Father Tony, Father Anthony Figueroa, he is, um, his bio was sent to everybody. Father is known around the streets of Rome. He's been in the Vatican for a long time and at the North American College in Rome, where the seminarians in our country, the United States, go and they study in Rome and they stay at the Pontifical North American College. So we're in Assisi and we begin in Assisi, um, the city of Francis. Today is just part one. There's so much to see in Assisi. There's uh, the spirituality of St. Francis is to understand it. We could not do it in just one pilgrimage. And since we have in this medium, the abundance of time and space, we decided to go ahead and have it as a three-part pilgrimage. We will have on the maps, you will see St. Francis Basilica and St. Clair's Basilica, which are somewhat the anchors of the town. It's a very small medieval walled city. It's right behind me. To my, oops, this way, over here is, that's the Basilica of St. Francis. And then over here is the Basilica of St. Clair. It looks far, it's not that far. It's a little over a mile walk and it's a, it's a mile walk uphill pretty much to get to the main piazza in Assisi. So we'll try to give you the lay of the land as well as go into some of the very important churches. We'll start where his Christian life started at the cathedral that is still there. It's not the same building, but it's actually the Bishop's church. It's the San Rufino. And we'll see um, a few things there and understand the beginning of his spiritual Christian life. Um, so I'd like to introduce from here, Robert Moynihan and Father Tony and, and the Archbishop of Assisi, our friend Domenico Sorrentino, and they will lead us on pilgrimage. Uh, thank you, Deb. Okay. Okay. I, I think you've promoted the bishop. <laughs> oh, did I? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, abbiamo promosso ad arcivescovo. I I I am really an archbishop, but you, only with a personal title because I was archbishop in Pompeii and when I came uh, to Assisi, the Holy Father left me this title. This is uh, is, is not, not a promotion. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I I say to my people. Uh, to to call me in a very simple way, Father, Father Bishop. This is uh, what, what I uh, uh, always uh, feel very, very appropriate to the, the mission of a bishop. Eh? Uh, I think since we have you here, it's so special. You're in Assisi. Italy has been under lockdown. The city of St. Francis is a point of reference for peace in the whole world. What is it like in Assisi right now and how are you suffering there? Yeah, we are suffering. It's incredible to, to see an empty Assisi is some, something uh, is not, to, not to believe. Not, we, we do not believe to our eyes. Huh? But uh, thank God, just yesterday we had the possibility from our governments to reopen our churches from next 18th. Right? So with strict, strict norms, strict norms, eh? we, but we uh, can open our churches and also we can celebrate masses again with, with few people, very good organized, so that there is a, a social distance, uh, as we say now. I, I don't prefer the, the, the social distance. I, I say therapeutical distance because uh, socially we, we, we must not be in distance. We, we must be uh, together. But uh, with this distance and with some uh, hygienic precautions, we uh, can, from the 18th of this month, uh, uh, finally open our churches also for the Mass. Now the churches are open uh, only for uh, personal devotion. Eh? Uh, but from 18, we uh, will also celebrate Mass again. It's uh, a great regard. We, we were uh, uh, waiting for, for this moment. Well, thank you, Bishop, Archbishop. And uh, <laughs> we see you in your study. You have a few books. 
So you are still using printed material. You're not just working off of your computer on Google and the internet. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so you, you are a point of reference also because in the life of St. Francis, which is the end of today's pilgrimage, yes. and I'll mention it here at the beginning, Francis was seeking his vocation in life. Yes. He was trying to decide what he should do, how he should be as a Christian. Mm -hmm. And we begin mm -hmm. with his baptism, and uh, that's the great church where he's buried at the end of Assisi, yes. the Basilica of San Francesco, with the sunlight coming over the top. And in the bushes there, the three letters are written in, the, in those bushes, P-A-X. I don't know if you can all see that, mm -hmm. but that means Pax, peace. Cool. And then that looks down over the valley of Assisi, one of the most beautiful sites in the world. And that's the site that St. Francis would have seen when he walked on this hillside city. They built it up in the last 30 or 40 years, but it's still, it, the particular area we're seeing is protected. They're not allowed to build on it. Down below there, where there are some buildings, is the town in the valley called Santa Maria degli Angeli. Now that is the church St. Mary of the Angels. And that church, the friars went out from there and were missionaries in California. That's the place where Los Angeles got its name from, Santa Maria degli Angeli. And the place down there where the church is, is where St. Francis lived most of his life from about 1208 or 1209 up into the 1220s. He died in 1226. And so he would have been down below the city living with his friar brothers, a life of prayer. And everyone in Assisi could have looked down and seen him there. And he built a little ch church there called the Portiuncola. And that church uh, will be visiting on the third of these pilgrimages. What we're focusing on today is Francis seeking his vocation. And what he essentially did was pray for the guidance of God. And finally, God spoke to him through a crucifix and gave him the message that became the meaning of his life, the, the vocation of his life. But the message had a double significance. The message was, Francis, don't you see that my church is falling down? Won't you rebuild it? And Francis immediately said, oh, the church is falling down. The stones are falling out. I've got to go get some stones and build the church. But only later did Francis understand the deeper meaning that each of us is a stone, a living stone, each of our souls. And if our souls uh, fall to one side or the other, the church weakens and the, ch the stones of the church, which we are, crumble. So Francis eventually... Yes. If I can just say that, Bob, I, it's really true. Um, going right to the birth and baptism of Francis, I think it's so key. Um, this birth of Francis, you know that Dante Alighieri, when he writes his Divine Comedy, he says that the sun, a sun was born into the world. Sun as in the sun in the sky. It's a beautiful expression and it's amazing because Francis was born in the year 1181 at the end or the beginning of 1182 and uh, his father uh, Pietro uh, was out in France and when he came back from France he uh, he was really surprised that his wife Pica she was from La Provence in France had given Francis the name Giovanni after John the Baptist and uh, and he was pretty annoyed about that because he did not want Francis to be a man of God. Huh? He wanted Francis to be a businessman, a cloth merchant like himself. So I'm not sure many people know this but he named Francis Francesco. Why? Because Francesco means Frenchman, a Frenchman. And so, uh, yeah, and so he really wanted him to be, really to take on all of the aura and the style of the people of France. But I'm not sure if we can go to uh, San Rufino, the uh, 
basilica are there, but this is actually the co-cathedral of Assisi. I'm sure Archbishop Sorrentino is going to tell us something about it. But in the cathedral of San Rufino is where is is the baptistry where both Saint Francis and Saint Clare, as well as another great saint, Gabriel of Our Lady of the Sorrowful Virgin, was uh, they were baptized exactly in that spot. And it's just really fascinating because, you know, Pope Benedict, when he visited uh, the church there, he remembered what St. John Paul II said. He, he said, you know, when we ask someone, uh, what do you want of the church, a catechumen? And you know what the response was for your children? We want baptism. And St. John Paul II says, we're really asking someone, do you want holiness? Do you want to be holy? Do you want to be holier when we ask about baptism? And so Francis's calling, his conversion began in baptism, which I'm sure Archbishop Sorrentino will be able to tell us a little bit about that because he wrote a wonderful book, Accomplices of the Spirit. I have it here. Uh, it's a lot about Francis and this calling. Uh, maybe Archbishop Sorrentino can tell us a little bit about San Rufino, your cathedral. Uh, yes, uh, I, I want to uh, stress uh, first that uh, at the time of St. Francis, uh, St. Rufino was uh, not yet completed uh, because uh, the first cathedral was really what we now call Santa Maria Maggiore and Shrine of Renunciation. Uh, this is my, uh, so to say, my personal church here, uh, because it's the Church of Bishop Residence. And this was the first cathedral. When this cathedral appeared small, the Assisi citizens wanted to, to build another one and was the uh, actual cathedral of San Rufino. Uh, historically, uh, it's discussed whether St. Francis was baptized here or in San Rufino. Probably is that he was baptized here and after when the new cathedral was uh, finished, the baptistry was taken, was brought there. But now when we want to have an experience of this time, of this moment of the, um, the history of St. Francis, we must go to St. Rufino, where the baptistry is. And it's so important what um, uh, Father uh, Tony said, and also Robert, uh, the Christian life starts with baptism. Uh, but I don't want um, to uh, say that only from a sacramental ritual point of view, because baptism is, is a sacrament, is a, uh, also a celebration. But I want to, uh, to recall uh, what Jesus says say to a friend of him, Nicodemus, in the, the first meeting he had with him. When Nicodemus uh, came to Jesus saying, we know that uh, you are uh, a, a prophet. You, you come from God because we see the signs, the miracles, so to say, you do. Uh, Jesus answered, please, to see really and to enter really the kingdom of God, you must be reborn, reborn. And uh, this was uh, a cold shower for, for Nicodemus, eh? but this really, really uh, explains what baptism is, is to be reborn in the Holy Spirit, because we are born in our natural life, but what baptism gives to us is the life of God. We see there, Archbishop, the actual baptistry. Yes, yes, yes. 
Uh, 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 yeah. so. Yes, uh, probably it, it, it comes from uh, this church of St. Mary Major to San Rufino, but it's that, the baptistry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so we, it, we, 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 we can recall our baptism. Eh? It is important in our, in our tour, uh, not only to uh, recall, to learn things, but also experience. Eh? Mm -hmm. If uh, everyone of us recalls his baptism eh, and say, oh, it's so good that I have uh, am been reborn in Jesus. In Jesus. Uh, uh, we died and we uh, have risen uh, with Jesus. We are new people, new person. And this is what really baptism is. But normally we uh, don't, don't feel it because we receive uh, baptism as we are uh, li little children and also St. Francis received baptism, but he rediscovered baptism as he was 25 years old. Right? So I used to say people coming here to the Shrine of Renunciation explain the baptism. Uh, uh, we uh, can start any time in our life to uh, rediscover our baptism. Eh? But I will tell something more when we are in the, in the Shrine of Renunciation. Eh? But now That's I would, would like really to... Important, I, Archbishop. Please? So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end the pilgrimage today in your home at okay. the shrine, and on the way we're gonna stop at the Chiesa Nuova, and yes. then San Damiano, and then we will go to your home. We'll finish okay. there. Okay. Okay. Uh, Archbishop, you asked us to remember our baptism. I have a story because my baptism was by my father's brother, who was a Franciscan priest. And his name was the same as mine. His name was Robert Moynihan. Uh -huh. And my father was two years younger. And my uncle had become a Marine in the Second World War and then had studied out in New York State at St. Bonaventure. And my father had gone out there in the minor seminary. Mm -hmm. But then my father left the minor seminary, became a Marine, and then became, got married. And then I was born. And for my baptism, he called his brother and he said to his brother, I, in, I name him after you. So I got the same name. And he said, yeah, I ask you to baptize him into the, into the church. So that's my memory. It's a family memory of my baptism. Very good. It's wonderful because it's another dimension, not to forget that baptism is a... Uh, an ecclesial experience, uh, we are baptized, of course, personally, eh, because it's a, a gift that God uh, gives to each one of us, but we are uh, a community. Eh, we are the body of Christ together, starting from the family, starting from the family. Eh? And so it's so uh, uh, wonderful to recall also your, your story. Eh? Normally, uh, baptism, uh, is in the family of church, in the church as a family, and also in the family as church. And this is, is what is normal. Well, and now we have Father Tony is living with his family, with his mother, who take, taking care of her. She's quite old now, mm -hmm. in London. So we have an, a remarkable session here, visiting Assisi and you personally, which is so special, having Father Tony living in London with his elderly mother. And we're in the United States and in other places around the world. We know we have Marion from Ireland. And so we're kind of a family of pilgrims visiting Assisi. Mm -hmm. and if, you look, if you look at this map, you can just quickly gain again perspective on this little, very special town. You can see that the whole top of it has the wall around the city. That's why we do call it a walled city. And the Basilica of St. Francis down on the left side, that's where Francis is buried. That church was built just after Francis died. Then the bishop's house you see up here in the middle 
at the bottom. That's where Bishop Sorrentino is right now. That's where he is at number 20. Yes, 20. yes. Yep, and we're gonna go there and he's sitting there. He's in 22. I think he's in 22 or 23. 22, I think. 20? The little number there on the building. Which building are you in? You're in 22 uh, or 23. Can you see that? My, 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 my bid, you, 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 you want uh, to know the, the name of my house here? You're in the house that's next to the church, correct? Yeah, yes. It's, yeah. It, it's not, be, num, not number three of the square. Number, number three, three of the, of the square. square, which is number 22 on the map that we're seeing. Yes. Yes. And that is the place. Ah, uh, uh, I see it. Yeah. That, that's Santa yes, Maria Maggiore. That's the place where the baptismal yes. spot was. Probably, you're telling us Francis Ferrelli was baptized yes. there. And then they moved totally. up to Cathedral of San Rufino. Yes, yes. Which yes. was the cathedral church. Yes, yes, really. Yes, I see now. So. In, in between those two is the Chiesa Nuova. That was new church, Chiesa Church Nuova, new. And that was built right near the main piazza in town. That white spot in the middle is the main piazza. And Francis yes. was growing up there. His parents had that house. And, yes. uh, okay. So this is, that's it. It's a fascinating time, you know. They, uh, I think what's really key is, you know, that as Francis was baptized, uh, he grew up with this real fascination of being someone who was important, someone who was admired. Uh, you know, his biographer, Thomas Celano, mm -hmm. <laughs> he writes that Francis, as a young man growing up, belonged to a group of youth who were addicted to evil and accustomed to vice. Credible, huh? He was <laughs> baptized, that remained in him, but it happens to so many of us, sir, huh? and I think many of our listeners, perhaps they have children, grandchildren, in the same situation. We perhaps were in that situation. You know, every saint has his past. Every sinner has his future with God. And uh, it, it's just, and Francis himself says, you know, he looks back at his life and he says, growing up, I lived in sin. I lived in sin. And uh, in that house where he was growing up, I believe there were three different levels at the time. On the bottom level was the, uh, was the actual uh, silk, the silk uh, factory of his father. His father was just a very famous, rich, wealthy silk merchant. So this is the Kiesen Wolf. And Francis, mm -hmm. yes. and, and Francis really was influenced by that culture. I think that's important. Huh? We may receive baptism, but we're influenced by our culture that we're living in. And, and, and imagine mm -hmm. living in that home every day, Francis would, 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 would really breathe in that well, breathe in his father's ambition for him. And he himself dreamt, he was, he's known as a dreamer who dreamt of becoming famous you know he wanted especially to become famous by becoming a knight a knight and maybe you can just tell us a little bit about his story either the archbishop or bob this, this great fascination he had and what really changed him you know that picture there is his mother holding the chains his father pietro his mother pica there's a story there because remember there was a time that his father actually had him bound in the cellar of his house for one month when Francis was converting, when Francis was accepting that call, his father was so angry, he, he locked him in a room and his mother freed him. I think that's beautiful, isn't it? His mother, like the Blessed Virgin Mary, freed him to continue his vocation. Well, I think also it's true that there are tensions in all of our lives. And for Francis, there was great tension with his father. It's a classic story of the father who imagines the son taking over everything that he has done. And in this case, Francis wanted to go in a different direction. 
And really the whole story that we're following leads us to the bishop's house where the bishop is now and to Francis rejecting his earthly father. And the bishop then, he takes off all his clothes, which is why we call it the, the place of the stripping or the place of the unclothing. And he puts himself in the hands of Mother Church and the bishop covers him with a cloak and he becomes a man whose father, in a sense, is God. His father in this world is the bishop. How do we start the video? Again? That was just feedback, I think. We can, we can see in this picture right here, um, to, the, to the right of the front door, there's a wall there. And you can see, for those who've not been to Assisi, the statue that we've been showing you, the bronze of his parents. So it's, it's right there against, as you walk into the church, off in this piazza to the right. So they were quite concerned about their son, Francis. They loved him. And uh, the father wanted him to take after him. Francis tried. He became a knight. He went off to fight in the armies. Each city had an army. And uh, Assisi was at war with Perugia. And then Francis went off to fight a battle in Spoleto, and he lost and was taken prisoner. And there you have a cathartic moment in his life when he was probably 22 years old, and he was in prison almost a whole year uh, in Spoleto. And finally he was released, probably a prisoner exchange of some sort or some type of... Uh, special uh, time of freeing prisoners. And he came back to Assisi, but he was uh, uncertain of what to do. He, he felt broken in some way. And so what, what we say is that we men stronger in the broken places. And my mm -hmm. father always said that to me. What Francis was looking for was to be healed in his understanding of his life and his mission. And it's at that point that he starts to seek and we say in scripture, seek and ye shall find. If we seek, we shall find. And there will be an answer to our seeking. And Francis spent months and months seeking how he could lead a life that was not the night life of a knight and not the life of a merchant, but a life that had profound meaning. And that's when he begins to lead a life of prayer. Do we have a picture of that, Deb? Of which one? going to us uh, towards San Damiano. Well, so so we're we're right now, as you can see, San Rufino, just so people can have an understanding of Assisi, um, is just up from the main piazza, which is where that eye is in the middle, just under the arrow that's pointing to Chiesa Nuova. That's the main piazza in Assisi. And that's a pretty steep climb. A lot of our pilgrims sometimes don't go up to San Rufino. And this house Chiesa Nuova, which is built over the family home of Francis, is really off to the side. Not many people really know it's there. Um, and it looks quite large in this photo, but it, it's, I, I've been looking at this photo thinking that it looks so much larger than I, than I can recall. And mm -hmm. so now we're going to go to San Damiano, which is outside of the wall. Yeah. I and think there's an important moment as well that um, we need to recount, and maybe Archbishop Sorrentino can, particularly when Francis was still in this moment that Bob talks about of seeking, he had an encounter, remember, with that leper. And I think that was fundamental. And I think that's why this moment of coronavirus, um, where we're touching suffering, can really bring grace, can really bring grace. Um, maybe Archbishop can tell us a little bit about this meeting and yeah. his own experience briefly. Yes, uh, uh, you are right, uh, Tony. St. Francis says in his testament, uh, I was converted this way. Uh, as I uh, did not want to see the lepers, uh, Jesus brought me amongst them and I expressed them mercy, mercy. And 
after doing that, what was uh, in in me, what was in me, uh, how, how to say, uh, uh, a, a darkness became a light. Eh? What was uh, uh, all became in, in me sweet, sweet. Eh? And uh, this is very important life of, of, of St. Francis. In the leper, he found Jesus. It's important to understand. Sometimes when Pope Francis speaks of the poor, eh, uh, there is always someone who says, ah, he speaks always of the poor, he forgets Jesus. Uh, it's not so. It's not so. Uh, it's Jesus. He who says in the gospel, when you want to find me, of course, you can find me in my word, in my uh, Eucharistic mystery, but you find me also in the poorest people. St. Francis converted, meeting the leper, the leper, and making, making mercy, he says, this is the textual words, I made mercy. To them. Eh? So it was really an experience of Christ. Mm. Uh, Thank you, Arthur. Uh, I uh, think uh, and, and this was the tension with his father, eh? because his father wanted uh, perhaps um, um, just, just make an almost, uh, just give some money to a poor, eh? but not to meet poor. Eh? It's a difference. It's a difference. Uh, Pietro di Bernardoni was not a, a, a bad man. Eh? He was, was a father. And in a, like many fathers of, of today, they want the best for his, for, for his sons. He eh? wants to, to have a normal, normal life. Also, also um, uh, thinking of the poor with, with, with some gifts. Eh? But uh, gospel is something more. Mm. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Bob, I think now we're going to head outside the walls. Okay, so what we're doing is walking down towards the Basilica of St. Clair, and we're going outside the wall and a little bit down the hill toward the little chapel of San Damiano, St. Damien. And this is not far. We're only 50 or 100 yards away. The chapel is to the left. This is an image of Francis looking out, praying, over that whole valley of Assisi, which we've seen. And that statue is there right now. And that is San Damiano. Now, if you look at this, this is the place where Francis heard the cross, the crucifix speak to him. So this is a intersection of God and man, time with the timeless, the eternal voice of God and the temporal voice of man. Go back again for one second. Now, if you look at that round window, that was in the middle of the church. You see that round at the back there, there's a round rose window. And you can see the darker stone going up. So the original size of that church was that smaller middle section. Do you see the little bit darker stone going up? And that was the original San Damiano. If I'm not mistaken, um, the bishop will correct me if I'm wrong. The little window above that, is it that where Claire put the monstrance, where we hear the story? Yeah, or, hey, yes, for, 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 yeah here, it, it, in, in a, uh, now we have an idea when we enter the church. Um, uh, this was the, the first monastery of St. Claire and her sisters. Eh? Now they live in uh, the Basilica of St. Claire inside the city. At the time of St. Francis, they were outside the walls of the city and precisely at San Damiano. San Damiano. So when you come to San Damiano, you can enter and see also the refectory where the, the sisters used to, to, to eat and where they used to live. Hmm? And I think what's fascinating, Archbishop, I, you can correct me on this, but it used to be a Benedictine monastery. Uh, and when Francis went there and saw exactly this cross, 
the church was kind of in ruins, I think. The monastery was in ruins. Yeah. Yes, and uh, he... uh, 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 absolutely. It was in a, in a very bad situation. And so, so you, you can understand the words of Jesus. Uh, uh, look at, at, at this church. Uh, all is falling. Uh, all the stones are falling. Uh, uh, Jesus was uh, saying this in a metaphorical uh, sense. That at first, as, as, as Bob said, uh, Francis understood this in a very uh, real way and started to to rebuild the church and the taking stones. But uh, Jesus wanted more, wanted more, uh, and it was this this beautiful crucifix. I, I I want to to stress that if you look at this crucifix, this comes from the the o o o Oriental, the Eastern Church tradition. Right? Yeah. At the time, it was a very good representative also in Italy. You look at, at, at this Jesus, you find the, crucif the crucified Jesus, but also the recent Jesus. You, you look at, at these ears, very open ears. Eh? These ears look at you, look inside your, your soul. Inside the, your eyes, soul the, eh? the eyes of Jesus. The eyes of Jesus. Eh? Um, uh, Francis had the possibility to, to look at these eyes eh? and look also what, what you, you have here under, under the arms of Jesus. You, you find Mary with John, the other um, women uh, staying at the foot of the cross, uh, coming from, from the heart uh, of the, the pierced heart of Jesus, where you, you see. You see um, uh, like in the, the Gospel of St. John says, water and blood from Jesus. This is a very uh, theological uh, expression of the church. Uh, what is church? Really is the, the body and the spice and the spouse uh, of, of, of Jesus coming from his pierced side, from his pierced heart. Eh? This is a, a, a wonderful theological catechesis of, of Jesus, of the reality of Jesus, you, if, you, if you could look um, uh, over the, the, the head of Jesus, you, you should see the, the ascended Jesus, eh? Jesus in, in his ascension to the Father, and mm -hmm. if you could look um, uh, in, at the bottom of, of, of the cross, you should should look uh, at, at at the uh, what, what is um, the we, we should say the hell we 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 see uh, we we say in in uh, in our creed that Jesus Jesus came down down to to to, to the hell eh? and so this um, you, you see this Jesus with his arm stretched. Eh? Uh, between sky, heaven, and earth. Eh? Uh, so, God and man, uh, with these arms embracing all humanity, all the world, uh, the, uh, the world of the hell, eh? and bringing, bringing all the world to the Father. And this not alone, but his spouse with, with the body. Eh? We are the body of Christ. We are a sacrament of this um, work of salvation, what Jesus wants want to, to say. So, so uh, beautiful what we are doing now, what we are doing with this pilgrimage. We, we must uh, become more and more the body of Christ to uh, help him, so to say. He really, he helps us. But so to collaborate with him, to bring all the world, uh, starting from our own life, to the Father, to the Father in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit. This is wonderful. When you come to Assisi, you, you can um, look at this crucifix, and this is a really splendid catechesis on whole, on whole the, 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 the Christian mystery. It's yeah. so beautiful, thank you. And we should, we should tell everyone that this is the chapel in San Damiano that you're looking at right now that crucifix above is a replica. This is the crucifix, the actual crucifix that spoke to St. Francis 
and it is in a side chapel at the Basilica of St. Clair. St. Clair, yeah. No. Right, so oh. we're showing you the actual crucifix here. Yes. But this crucifix yes. is actually in the Basilica. Uh, I think it was very nice, the bishop telling us to contemplate this crucifix. This would have been ours that Francis, this is the original. This one here is up in St. Clair's. They moved it from San Damiano. But this was the cross that Francis prayed in front of. The bishop emphasized that many crucifixes, Christ's eyes are closed. His head is hanging down. He has died on a crucifix. In this crucifix, with the influence of the Byzantine tradition, his eyes are open. There's the intimation of confidence in God the Father and the intimation of coming resurrection, even though he's hanging still on the cross. We see the five wounds very clearly marked. It's a, fact, it's a factor. There's a sort of star marks and red on each palm for the two nails in his palms. And there are marks on each foot for the two wounds. And as the bishop mentioned, there is blood and water coming out of the wound on his side. These are the, these are the marks that will be in the end of this pilgrimage on the third hour that we do, Francis will receive the stigmata. Mm -hmm. And these are the five wounds that Francis being fully identified with Christ, whom, to whom he has prayed, with whom he has communed, who spoke to him, he will finally be imprinted with what the medieval St. Bonaventure called it. He was signed with the sixth seal, which conformed him fully to Christ. And this made him a kind of apocalyptic figure, ushering in the final age of the world for the first followers of Francis. Francis was a figure who by fully conforming himself to Christ had prepared the world to be different, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's why they had such devotion to Francis. And I think that's really important, Bob, because just the, the times we are living in today are really similar. That's why I think Assisi really speaks to what is happening today. Uh, because at the time Francis was living, the 12th century, the church, Francis, go repair my church. It is falling into ruins. It's crumbling. Of course, Francis thought, you know, I'm going to go and get the bricks. He began selling his father's, uh, the, the silk uh, to go and, and get by these bricks. But of course, the Lord had a deeper message. He wanted an interior conversion. This we move now from the core to the message. Francis, go repair my church. It is crumbling, not with bricks and mortar, but an interior conversion, an interior conversion. Because at that time, we had a faith that in many ways was superficial. We had a clergy that was not very zealous. And we had all kinds of heretical movements appearing. And Pope Francis talks about this. Uh, he says, and Pope Benedict too, but they, they say in the world today, for example, there's a new gnosis, a new kind of knowledge that is appearing uh, where we really strip Jesus of his divinity and we make him a superhuman, a superhuman who really cannot save us. I think this is really essential because the, the one thing Francis wanted to do was to know and to love Jesus. Uh, everything else didn't matter to him after you know he had he he had that call and that message that's why i think i really believe today that we need to go back to this stripping and maybe that is what god is allowing in the church today i mean imagine we've uh, you know where we're even had the sacraments taken away from us and uh, god is speaking even through that uh, the Archbishop Sorrentino is writing a book at the moment called Crisis as Grace. And remember the word crisis in Greek means a turning point. What is the word in Greek? Krinein. 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 And, and this turning point 
I think is relevant today in what we're living. So we're seeing many things that are, are really difficult, great sufferings, but God can use them as a grace, as he did at the time of Francis. But I hope, Archbishop, you, you can tell us something about this. I really believe Francis speaks today through this call he had and the message he received at San Damiano. Definitely, he's uh, uh, really uh, speaking and, and calling. Uh, I, I feel that uh, we are living a special moment in our world. It's a, a moment of sufferance, but it's also a generative moment. Uh, very, very close to what St. Francis lived in uh, at his time. Uh, what you say, uh, Tony, that we must strip uh, of our service as church. This was, this was the, the, uh, the topic of Pope Francis. When he came to the Shrine of Renunciation, it was the first Pope coming here in, in all the, the history. Many popes had come to Assisi before, but only Francis, Pope Francis came here in the Shrine of Renunciation. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, strikes me uh, because we are in a time then we have all, uh, we must rediscover the essential the, of, of Christian influence. I, I tell this also to the Franciscan, the, 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 uh, the sons of Francis. I, I say to them, you must come here to rediscover your father. Eh? In, in, in this moment, when he stripped himself eh, of all his garments, but that, this was metaphoric, eh? he stripped himself of himself. himself eh? Because this is what Jesus did for us. I used to say to, Francis, to the Franciscan here in Assisi, Tony uh, knows this, when we speak of Francis, in 10 words telling Francis, we must say nine times Jesus, if we want to respect Francis. Francis wanted not to speak of himself, he wanted to speak of Jesus. He wanted not to be himself, want to be Jesus. This is Francis. Now we speak here of Francis, Francis, Francis. I uh, say my uh, Franciscan uh, uh, brothers and I say, stop, please. You must respect Francis. We must say nine times Jesus. Eh? And Francis who uh, calls Jesus and brings us to Jesus. This is important. You want to, to strip from himself, from uh, himself, to be Jesus. This is the, 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 the sense, the real meaning of, of, of the Shrine of Renunciation. And as I established it eh, uh, some years ago, I said to everyone, please, before speaking of the Renunciation of St. Francis, we must speak here of the renunciation of Jesus. We find this in the Bible. If we read a letter of uh, St. Paul to the Philippians, eh, he says in our splendid hymn that uh, Jesus uh, stripped himself eh, of, of his glory to be like us. This is Jesus. When we say renunciation, we must say the renunciation of Jesus expressed in the renunciation of St. Francis. Eh? This is important. For me, it's very, very important. When you come here to your seat, to a CC, it's not only to recall a story of Francis. Uh, this, this would be very simple and superficial. Eh? We must, uh, I'm so excited that we can bring everyone to that shrine in a few minutes um, that please, you have created please and Please. made in Assisi. Uh, um, but before we go, and before we leave San Damiano, since it was the convent of St. Clair, and it's okay. where she died, I, I thought it would be nice if you could just speak a little bit about St. Clair. Um, yeah, and someone asked why the cross was moved 
from San, Di um, San Damiano up to St. Clair Basilica of Santa Chiara. Oh, no, of course, the sisters uh, knew that this was the, the, the most precious thing of, of, of their father, Francis. Eh? And when they came in, into the city, they want, wanted to, 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 to bring this precious uh, object of, of the story of their fathers with them. This is very, very, very clear. Eh? And so they, they want to have the, the real cross who uh, spoke to, to, to Francis. Yeah, and St. Clair, of course, was it? Was a... I, I would say St. Clair. Uh, of course, St. Clair was younger than, than, than Francis, and she was called also. Uh, she was, uh, she um, was born in a noble, in a noble family of, of, uh, of Assisi. Um, and she was a, a very uh, good girl also from the, the point of view of, the, of her devotion. But uh, looking at Francis, what Francis had done, uh, it was a, a shock for the city, he started to, um, to uh, ask herself what Jesus wants from me. And she had the possibility to converse with, with Francis. And of course, Francis uh, spoke to her of, of his experience. And th this was so moving and touching for her that she said, I want to live with you. And she escaped, escaped from uh, her house. Yeah, it is a, a story to, to, to recount. When we go to the, the Basina in another, another um, uh, uh, pilgrimage, and when we go to, to St. Clair, we can uh, recall also the story of St. Clair. It's very, very interesting. And she escaped from her house and reached Francis and his uh, first friends in the Portuncola. And there, Francis cut uh, her hairs and she started the new life. Eh? And St. Francis uh, tried to, to find for, for her and for her sisters the, uh, the a monastery. And, um, it was really um, uh, very meaningful that he chose for her St. Damiano. Eh? The, the, the church where he heard the voice of the, of the crucifix. And, and this was the first monastery of St. Clair, where St. Clair, Clair died also. Eh? Yeah, this is the place where she died. It says, Qui mori here died Santa Chiara. This yes. is in Assisi today. There was San Damiano. And, you know, Father Tony used the word earlier, and we've got five minutes to go here, and we're going to go to the bishop's cell in a minute, but I wanted to touch on this question of gnosis or Gnosticism. And what is it that makes it a danger for the Christian faith? The Christian faith is based on real things, real historical events. It's not a philosophy, nor is it even a moral system. It's a following of a person that is Jesus Christ. We've heard the bishop say, when you speak of Francis you, 10 times, you should use the word Jesus nine times. And what Jesus is for us is the, the logos, the meaning of the universe, incarnate in flesh, actually walked and lived, born of the Virgin Mary. This story we tell in our creed, and Gnosis, the danger of Gnosticism and Gnosis is that it says, if we know something we have special knowledge. We're like initiates in a secret wisdom. We get closer to the, to the to to God or to whoever is the source of that wisdom, but we lose the track of the incarnate Christ, and we lose the track of the common love of the poor and common work for one another in the family. So the Gnostics tend to become focused on knowledge, on intellect. And they think because they've understood things. This is why I'm afraid of our modern focus on artificial intelligence. We think that the computer will be like a god to us, but we will lose our souls. Our souls are nourished by actual bread transformed into the body and blood of Christ. And our Gnosticism 
would despise the holiness of the poor woman saying her rosary beads in the old days she would go in the back of the church she would pray for her husband for her children and she was very close to christ but the gnostics would say she's ignorant she doesn't really know what she's doing her mind is not sufficiently illuminated so the, the gnostics or the illuminati the illuminated ones are kind of missing the centrality of the person of christ which francis focused on and that's my that's my story for today Okay. So here is the courtyard in San Damiano. Um, so beautiful. And now we go, we're going back. We're going to walk uphill back inside the walls of the CC. And we're going to go. Coming back from San Damiano. From San Damiano, which is down in the right hand corner. And okay. we're going to go visit our friend and your friend now. I don't know if you can see the little word San in the very bottom right corner. Can you see that? That's San Damiano. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think I think the bishop's going to receive us. Yeah, yeah. Okay. exciting. Welcome. We're actually Welcome. going to the, to the bishop's now. house. The sanctuary of renunciation where Francis stripped before Bishop Guido and his father and said, you know, Pietro Bernardone, whom he respected, you are no longer my father. My father is in heaven. This is just amazing, I think, that we, we are in a CC with Archbishop Sorrentino in this very moment, in that very place. Now, the person who most resembled Jesus, they say, is Francis. He wanted to follow Jesus. We're in that very spot now with Archbishop Sorrentino. Maybe, Archbishop, you can tell us this story, what happened in the... Yeah, yes, it's, uh, uh, what happened that, uh, as Bob said, Father Tony recalled uh, the father of, of, of Francis was very, very angry with him. And uh, he did not accept absolutely uh, the new life of Francis for Jesus, for the poor. And at the end he said, good, if you want to, to come back to your house and your family in the, uh, and be a, a good boy, uh, uh, like in the, in, in the past, uh, this is your house. But if you don't want, I reject you. Uh, uh, Bob said this uh, would be not, not exactly to, uh, to, to say that he, was, he rejected his father. No, he was rejected from his father. Eh? Father Bernardone brought him uh, to the bishop because he want to be him judged from the bishop and he said uh, if you don't come back to house and to your work you are no more my son eh? and I uh, take a, uh, away from you also your heritage eh? you are no more my uh, my son the words that uh, um, Francis said, uh, no more Father Piero di Bernardone, but our Father in heaven must not be interpreted, in my opinion. Uh, I do not want more my Father. This uh, would be against the, the, the fourth commandment of oh God. Eh? No, he, he, he uh, wanted to say, I, he could, uh, add, unfortunately, unfortunately, have no more an earthly father, but I have my heavenly father. Eh? So uh, it was not Francis to reject his father, but the father rejecting Francis. Uh, and what uh, uh, Francis found was first, the Heavenly Father, uh, if you look at the splendid uh, scene of Giotto in the upper basilica, you will find Francis with the, the arms uh, uh, lifted up uh, to the heaven uh, in a, a contemplative way. It's, a, it's a, a, a vertical mystic. Here in the, in the the, we are here in the, the Shrine of Renunciation and in the Room of Renunciation, which is uh, on the side where the event of Renunciation happened. 
If you say this, you see, you see another dimension of the event, the ecclesial dimension. Uh, he was rejected uh, from his uh, he, uh, earthly father, this one, this, this year, Pietro di Bernardone, but he found the ecclesial father, the bishop, eh, who represents all the church and the body of Christ. There are two dimensions, very, very uh, wonderful to, 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 uh, to stress this, eh, to emphasize this, because St. Francis uh, distinguished himself in the history of the church of that time, uh, where the, <coughs> there were many people uh, calling for the renewal of the church. And they said, uh, we want gospel, we want Jesus, but not the church. And St. Francis said, I want Jesus with the church because Jesus without the church does not exist, does not exist. Yeah. Jesus loves the church uh, also when the church is not worthy of him. This is the, the love of God. Eh? He died for his church and the whole humanity. So St. Francis understood this, that we must love the church as our mother, uh, also when our mother is not, is not uh, good as she should be. Eh? But from the inside of the church, we must do as St. Francis do. We must have Jesus to repair, repair, uh, to, to bring the church to, to his, to his uh, beauty, his beauty. And so it's wonderful for me, this room is really uh, the, the symbol of the new restarting of the church today. In this, in this book I'm, I'm writing, Crisis as uh, Grace, the, the subtitle is um, to a new spring of the church. We must believe that Jesus wants to save his church, to bring the church to his beauty. He is able to do this, but he uh, uh, speaks to us like he spoke to St. Francis and say, please help me to repair, to repair my house. Do it in yourself first, because it's, it's simple to, uh, to, to speak to the others. O obviously, the, other, uh, uh, the others are bad. And I must repair the beauty of the church in myself, in my heart. And if I repair the beauty of the church in my heart, I can also speak to, to the others. I don't want to say words. I want to say a life, a life. This is, is the... the the importance of the, this uh, symbol of St. Francis for the whole the church today. Yeah. Well, Bishop, that is a very eloquent, beautiful words. We are nearing the end now of this pilgrimage. We are so appreciative to you. We began with Francis born in Assisi in 1181. We have now traveled to about 1206. He's 25 years old. He sought his path. He was a soldier. He was a prisoner. He was, a, he was a boisterous young man. He then prayed, he heard the cross speak to him, come rebuild my church. That led him into conflict with his father and he renounced all of his earthly possessions in this particular moment of the disrobing or the spoliazione as you call it in the chapel there in Assisi, which is a chapel and a shrine that you yourself have built up wasn't really that's central to the life of Assisi until you became bishop. And we have been privileged to come to this point. We will then take two more pilgrimages from the time Francis is 25 to the time he dies at about the age of 45. And we will follow his building up of his Franciscan order. And then we will come in the third section to the to the suffering and uh, mystical identification in the in the stigmata of Francis with Jesus Christ. So we will follow the whole story of St. Francis through to its conclusion. Thanks very much for everyone. Deb, do you have something to add? Oh, uh, I, I wanted to 
we have a, I think someone has a blessing, Father Tony. Father, or... I was going to ask, um, I want to thank Father Tony and thank you, Robert. And of course, our friend, the Bishop of CC, Domenico Sorrentino. Um, you have, I, when I was, go, when I was preparing this pilgrimage, I want to share with you that I, I went through so many photos um, of Assisi because I want, we wanted to bring you there as best we could physically and spiritually. And so many photos I have of the Bishop with so many of our pilgrims. And you, I, it's always um, heartwarming for me to see how many pilgrims you have received and you continue to receive. And we look forward to the day, to the day where we can all join you in that beautiful shrine that you have built up. Um, so we hope that everyone has enjoyed this, this pilgrimage. And before we open it for questions and answers, I think we have some time for that. I would like to ask the Bishop to please, um, if he could give us his blessing. Yes, of course, of course. And I give it to you. I to think he's been uh, muted. Uh, no, I hear him. I, I can hear the Bishop. Yes, uh, I uh, beg our uh, Heavenly Father uh, to give us his blessing. And I ask him to do it in an abundant way to the intercession of St. Francis, especially to the intercession of Our Lady of the, of the Rosary, eh? the Mother of Jesus and Our Mother. And may the mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's so, been wonderful. Thank you, Archbishop. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank, thank you all. Thank you all. And I was very, very joyful, very, very happy. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Uh, to, the, to the next time. The uh, next time. If, if, I can, if I can, because when we are going to, to, uh, to move again, to restart with our life, uh, sure, I will have many, many appointments. And uh, now uh, I am a, a, a little bit little bit in, the, in pause, uh, a little bit in, the, in rest. Eh? I'm uh, working uh, this way, but uh, when we have uh, the possibility to restart again with our life, I will have many appointments. But I uh, hope to be with you uh, also next time. Eh? Archbishop, we need to keep you in lockdown, in quarantine, then. Yeah, yeah, but, but not so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, bye bye. God bless you all. Bye thank bye. you. Thank bye. you. We hope that you can join us next time. And we will have two more parts to Assisi. Um, we will send out an email following up. And we have um, our Giving Tuesday that is open till Sunday. And if you like these pilgrimages, we ask that you help to support them, please, because they are free. And we will have next. Wednesday at one o'clock, a meet and greet on Zoom with the Inside the Vatican family. We want to thank all of those who have supported us on Giving Tuesday. And um, you'll be able to ask us questions and hear what's going on and what we have planned for the future. So that email will be following. And um, uh, Christopher and all the monitor moderators, I really want to thank you for watching um, the rooms and having people come in and uh, making sure everyone stays muted so we have good sound quality. If anyone has any questions now, they can raise their hand or put it in the chat. And Christopher, I'll let you, uh, or Katie, if you could just unmute because I can't read that, if you could let us know what the questions might be. You know, why we have the bishop still, and they're trying to see if there's any questions. There is something that I've been wanting to share with people, but our time was limited. And um, Bishop, if you could uh, introduce everyone to the latest saint that is in Assisi, um, or soon to be saint, um, and you have it in the, the church there, in your home, um, Carlos, uh, who, when you shared his story with us and our mm -hmm. pilgrims, it has just uh, been a wonderful story, and it was an honor to get to know him. 
It's a wonderful story. And I have also a book that I wrote in, in America, United States, in, in Seattle, when I, I was there two, uh, two, two years ago. Uh, as I, I went there to, to speak in a, in a, in a, in a parish uh, in, on, near Seattle, in Renton, uh, which is uh, starting our project of the renewal of the church with, with the, the, the little spiritual families. Eh? And, and the, the, the pastor there, Father Ed, was a very zealous priest, uh, say, say to me, uh, please, um, families of the gospel, we, we must uh, also uh, make uh, young people of the gospel. Oh, sure. They said, let, let, let me uh, meet some, some, some young people. Uh, it was so 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 good for me to speak of Jesus to Saint Francis, but also through through Carlo Acutis, eh? this 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 uh, um, young man uh, who died in, in two, um, uh, 2006, uh, and who is going to be um, beatified uh, next. Uh, I hope at, at the end of June. At the end of June. Ah. Uh, at the end of June. Uh, in, we, in have, we, we, we in Assisi. See, we have a, a little problem now. Perhaps you, you can uh, give us a piece of advice uh, because uh, it would be impossible to, to do it with, with so many people. Um, but um, someone advised me to, uh, to do this beatification in, in uh, any way because uh, he was um, uh, so uh, interesting. Uh, young young men very very uh, fond of the internet eh? through internet through um, computer he made uh, an exhibition of the, of the eucharistic miracles eh? so there are people who say this could this could be the uh, a pattern a heavenly pattern of the internet of the internet and it would be uh, good to make this beatification here in a uh, in a, a basilica and a great church of Assisi uh, with with not many people uh, we could be uh, hundred people and, uh, and with the, no, no no more but with a, a great uh, great um, uh, participation of, of uh, in internet way and then. Uh, next year, perhaps we can do a, a great feast to to, uh, to recall it. Uh, wh what do you think about? It? Because it's a, it's a, could, could be a, a, an interesting thing, but we we, we must um, uh, uh, speak with with many people in in this area of, of uh, the uh, e internet participation uh, because. Uh, many, many people are interested, many people also from the United States, from Brazil, where uh, the miracle happened, who uh, is bringing him to beatification. Many people from uh, all the world are interested, interested at, at this, at this uh, little uh, young, young man. Hmm? I think it would be wonderful if it could be broadcasted and people could join via the internet. If, if I remember correctly, um, he created this website with Euch Eucharistic Miracles. Yes. He visited many of these places. And, and he, he came from a Catholic family, but they weren't necessarily practicing, but he had this gift of faith. And yes. his desire was Jesus. And so he wanted to go and visit these Eucharistic miracles and being the good parents that he had, they wanted to support him in his interest. And yes. so through their son, they went to these shrines and they themselves were converted. Yes, um, yes, yes, really, and, then, yes, yes. and he was young and he, he was he a converted his, he converted his mother, his mother, eh? he converted his mother. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful story, eh? and, uh, and uh, as I spoke to these young people of, of Seattle, of Renton, uh, it was for me so, so beautiful to compare St. Francis, the great St. Francis of uh, 800 years ago with this uh, li little child of, of, of today. It was so, so, so good that at, at the end I said, I must write uh, the, 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 this little book, St. Francis, and and uh, Carlo Acutis. And I uh, gave uh, as a title uh, something that Carlo used to say. He used to say, we all are born original, but 
we all die photocopies, photocopies, to say that only, that only Jesus keeps us really original and makes us original, like the, the design of, of God is for every one of us. Uh, it's, it's splendid, it's splendid. It's a, it's a, a, a little life eh, of, of 15 years, but really rich of, of message. It is to say, not I, but God. Non io, ma Dio. In Italian, it sounds better with, with rhyme. Non io, ma Dio. Non io, ma Dio. It's a renunciation. No. We have a question. Is your book on Carlo, is it in English or just Italian? Uh, so not, not, not yet in English, it's in Italian. Well, but, we have to work to get it in English before June. Not well, I'm working, that. I'm working on translation with the bishop and uh, with the bishop's permission, we should really try to get that published in English. Yes. If the bishop, because uh, uh, it'll be a wonderful, wonderful testimony at this time it's not by chance as the bishop says he's the patron of the internet and look how we are communicating mm -hmm. in this moment yes yes uh, really uh, we, we can say that that he accompanies us it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful story and if you do that that you translate tony and, and you find really a publisher in english i would be very very grateful uh, because sure. the uh, idea there Great. We can work on that, Bishop. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. I, I don't think there's any other questions. Um, there is. First, I wanted to explain Carlo Acutis is the name of the 15-year-old Italian boy who worked on the internet, converted his mother, was deeply spiritual, and now is supposed to be beatified in one month's time. He's a, a marvelous figure, just died. Of, what year did he die? Just a few years ago he died. Yeah, 2006. 2006, so 14 years ago. And um, he's kind of a, a very special person. The bishop has written a book about him, and uh, we'll try to see what we can do to get that ready. But the question was, should he have the beatification already in June because the restrictions are likely still to prevent you know, 5,000 people from coming. He, he can only have, you know, a, a dozen or a few dozen. And he's thinking, yes, still to go ahead. Some people have advised him, and he was wondering if any of us had advice for him on that. Well, yes, the, I certainly hope question. to go ahead. <laughs> and we can, as you hope, do a bigger celebration in a year when it's the situation is better for more people to come together. But I think uh, that we need someone like Carlo today. I think it would be. Uh, I think it's really important to know that uh, Carlo Acutis was really fascinated by the figure of Francis. I mean, he, he loved Jesus. He, he wanted to follow Jesus, but saw that Francis followed Jesus. And that's why he spent so much time in Assisi, which I think is just uh, amazing. There, there's a great French writer who says that the greatest sorrow in life would be that we do not become saints. And I think it would be wonderful that uh, a figure in this period who uh, is beatified would give hope, great hope to the church, great hope to the church. Well, we have reader uh, uh, pilgrims here. Eileen Smith writes, I say, go for it, Bishop. Yes. <laughs> Peggy During writes, please go ahead. We yeah. need this to happen now. And then, it's, it's important for me to, to hear from you. I, I, I uh, will encourage the Cardinal to come anyway here in Assisi. It should be the uh, 21st of, of June, something like that. And, uh, the Cardinal Becher should come here for the beatification. And now we are uh, discussing. Uh, so for me to hear from you, this uh, advice is uh, important. It's important. Well, Pe Peggy Doring writes, it is a sign of life continuing. A life continuing, really, really, really. And, and I can assure you this is a splendid figure. As, as I, I spoke a little with the uh, American young people. They uh, were really fascinated. Huh? It's, uh, so. Okay. We, we have Richard and Molly saying, don't wait. And we have Susie saying, yes, please do not delay Carlos' beatification. We all need a patron saint of the internet. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we're taking a poll on the internet. Isn't this ironic? Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe we could even help assist in some way setting up this global sort of uh, some type of meeting to participate in the beatification. Uh, I, I couldn't get. I couldn't get what. We would, would do. Maybe we could help do a, a, a. We could do a video of the beatification oh. and have people participate like they oh. are doing with this. Oh, okay, I, 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 I can uh, speak with you about and and we can we can uh, uh, join our uh, efforts to um, to to make the the, uh, the best the best work uh, for for this because it's important that. Um, we have uh, many, many uh, bro bro broadcasting uh, uh, possibilities because mm -hmm. if you are all, only a hundred people mm -hmm. in the church, this would be um, very, very uh, little, very little. We, we, we must have uh, a world coming through the internet and then uh, giving an appointment for uh, some uh, also physical uh, come here to visit him. Hmm. So we, 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 we should, we should uh, speak about the possibilities we have. If we have an idea, give it to me. I think we could even consider um, perhaps a, a virtual pilgrimage on Carlo. And it's before the beatification to help people to, to go on pilgrimage and to pray beforehand. Um, and then to have our final one in a CC for his beatification. Um, I think that would be important and, and then, help spread the word. And Let also, us do it. Uh, okay. Uh, also, out of this group here, there are some people that would like to visit mm -hmm. you in a CC, and maybe there's a Bonaventure scholar, a scholar of St. Bonaventure who would like to spend some time in a CC. So uh, we are creating a little community of friends of a CC here, and we'll try to organize that a little bit in the coming days and weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, let, let, let us do it. And my, my best wishes for this program and for the planning. Thank beautiful, you. beautiful, beautiful. All right. Well, we thank everybody again for joining us this week. Um, part two will be next Friday. And um, if the Bishop can join us, he will. We hope that you'll join us next Friday. And um, again, on Wednesday, if you'd like to join us for Giving Tuesday, you'll get the link and we'll have a meet and greet and talk about all these possible opportunities and also the other initiatives that we have in store. Thank you. And remind, remind me, please, if, if I can, uh, I will stay with you at least, at least a, a, a little time. Uh, uh, I will send you an email. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Stay, stay well as you enter back into as you enter back into the world. Okay. Pax et bene. Pax et bonum. Bye bye.